begin tonight with the aftermath of a day of turmoil in Portland. It started with a deadly police shooting in Lentz Park on Friday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. Today, police identified the officer in that shooting as Zachary DeLong, an eight year veteran at the Bureau. He is on administrative leave during the investigation. They also identified the man who was shot. They say he is this man, 46 year old Robert Douglas Delgado and died of a gunshot wound. His family provided this picture of him. Police say this started yesterday when they got reports about a white man at the park pointing a gun. Officers confronted the man and police say, quote, at some point, both less lethal and lethal force were deployed by officers. Now, this is early on in the investigation and a lot of questions remain about what happened here. In the hours that followed, we saw multiple protests, first in Lentz Park and then later last night in downtown Portland. One stayed peaceful, but the other resulted in destruction, looting and fires. Crystal Kumwe looks at today's recovery. A group of about 100 people gathered at Salmon Street Springs and ended up downtown at the Justice Center. Police say that group was peaceful. They did not require police contact and dispersed on their own. A separate group of about 100 people gathered at Director Park and started marching at 9.30 p.m. Friday, and that's when the destruction started. When the vandalism began, police say people set multiple fires at various locations. The police declared it a riot once the crowd started smashing windows throughout downtown Portland. Saturday morning, the people at First Christian Church were picking up the pieces. Right now we're putting up plywood to cover damage to our windows. The church on Southwest Park, which provides meals to thousands in need, put up signs like love one another on their now broken windows. Lead pastor Cynthia Dobson McBride says the messages embody the church's mission of love and unity. She says she doesn't believe the church was specifically targeted. Sometimes when windows are broken in a riot, it's not a specific uh, statement by one individual. It's more people who seem to be caught up in the angst of the moment. This is the second time First Christian Church has been damaged in the last year. The cost of the repairs add to the struggle the church already faces in the pandemic. I felt frustrated because even just the effort of putting plywood up and knowing we have to repair windows again uh, takes funding away from the important work we do to feed the vulnerable. Not far from the church, the Oregon Historical Society was also damaged and had their windows smashed for the second time in a year. Here we are again. It is. Um depressing on many levels. Kerry Timchuk is the museum's director. He says after the last time, they reinforced doors and windows to help keep people out. After the last incident, we invested in windows that were uh, impenetrable, uh, so they weren't able to get in as they did last time and throw flares into the building or uh, steal things, which they did last time. Though he went on to say that fixing the damage will cost several thousand dollars. The museum and church will both remain open, and they both believe there has to be a better way to solve problems in our community other than violence. If history teaches us anything, it's that vandalism and violence are not the answer. Uh, talking and conversation, working together uh, is the answer. There are a lot of tensions across the country and around the world right now. And we need to find a better way to move forward together to resolve injustices and to do so without violence. Police say three people involved in the riot have been arrested, booked and charged. In downtown Portland, Christelle Kumwe, KGW News.